startups have a lot of times a couple of key motivators. They either think they can quickly make FDA approval or they think that, you know what, I'm just going to hope for the best. I've got a, a limited amount of capital and somebody might buy me if I get far enough along. For scaling up a process, one of the key things that you want is you want to get something in that you can sort of do repeatedly, sustainably, and also you want to do it as, as quick as possible. So I want to take whatever this is, do my value add activity to it and send it back out. At the pilot stage, I get some, I get some information. Uh, I might get a packet of here's what worked, here's my one thing I want you to evaluate and see how much you can possibly make of it. By the time I've gotten it to a, sort of a manufacturing stage, I've really got it locked in. I'm getting handed a packet that says make it this way. If you deviate at all, you'll get 3% loss here, you'll get 5% loss here. This is your filter to use, this is your, your maybe your single use or your reusable technology to use. This is even the company you have to buy it from. All of these stages come back to how fast can you do a tech transfer activity. I have some things that I know, I have some things that I don't know, and the more technology that's common or the more technology I've experienced and used before is gonna help me do my, do my work faster. Some of the pitfalls that a lot of times kill off a, a process is you've got assumptions about how you think something's gonna behave at a larger scale. There's a lot of inconsistencies when making, when making things bigger. So if you can use the same technology that has a similar maybe sensing element or a similar form factor or the exact same technology, for example, at the smallest stage and use it up to the larger stage, you're gonna have a lot better chance of it having consistent tendencies when it gets up into those, those bigger areas. If a small company wants to get to market as fast as possible, pay special attention to which, which vendors can um, provide technology that's going to scale effectively. So you're really going to want to avoid sort of that maybe a small disk filter that doesn't have a larger analog or a sensing technology that, that fails at, at your manufacturing capability. You're going to want to pick components that are that are that are useful to you but also um, have some repeatable manufacturing built into them as well. So if you've got something repeatable at the beginning, you're going to be able to quickly optimize your, your product. A lot of companies are moving towards more single use and more um, continuous manufacturing, which is, which is really good for optimizing their yield. Um, the nice thing about using some, some disposable technology and some automated technology is you can have these pre-set up. It doesn't matter what what you, your customer as the CMO or as a CRO is is giving you, you're going to be prepared for it. So having one thing that's flexible from, from a small scale all the way up to a, a maybe pilot or, or larger scale, the same piece of equipment, that's, that's really going to be helpful. If you can qualify a particular material, that is more useful at a manufacturing scale, that's going to be a, a really huge benefit. A contract researcher or R&D lab is going to want to use the, the components that are going to be qualified later. So going in with certified components at the beginning, have all the validation documents and backup, uh, that's going to really, really help them.